Hey there, thanks for your interest in this uh, Yamaha Pulsar 450 from 1980, real relic. This one's been left in a garage or something somewhere. It's uh, been exposed to heat and moisture, obviously, and got some cracks in the top coat. Uh, doesn't affect the, the body or playability or sound at all. Um, plays great, really nice low action. Um, at the moment it's 1.5, but it would go down uh, further than that to one millimeter, I think, without any problem. There's a lot of room on the bridge. Um, for those of you interested uh, in Pulsar bases, this one's probably sold already because I've been discussing about it with a customer. Um, those of you interested, you can follow uh, the link below to my 100 page and you could hire my 100 services to get you a Pulsar. Um, Pulsars came in various shapes and sizes, um, flavors, some with um, uh, like a sand body uh, in a natural color, some with a sand body in sunburst, some with a uh, basswood body in sunburst or alder. I think this one's basswood or alder. Um, it's quite light either way. Um, Plays great. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, I can play this all day. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's got a nice uh, neck profile, it's a thin C grip um, with a 40 uh, millimeter nut there. Uh, so it's it's between a, a modern jazz bass and a precision bass uh, in terms of nut width, um, which makes it very comfortable uh, for a P bass. You know, a lot of P, traditional P is 44 millimeters wide. Many of the Japanese P basses are 42 at the nut, this is thinner. So um, that's a, a nice point about the Pulsars. I think the Pulsar 600 was wider at 42 millimeters. That's the old Sen uh, body uh, one. But yeah, I mean, this thing plays like, like, like water. Uh, really nice low action and like I said, we had to replace the bridge because the, the, the original one was so rusted. Um, but uh, uh, there's a lot of room on the bridge to go up or down. Um, good neck trajectory um, in the pocket there and good alignment. And uh, it's just, you know, the strings sit fairly low there in the nut. Um, it plays, it's very smooth. Know, especially down in, in the work area of the bass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just really, really playable. So what I've done is um, I had to uh, virtually do re-solder everything because the solder joints were so um, affected by moisture over the years and replace some of the wiring um, and that's uh, that's got it playing nice and cleanly and sounding great so that's good um, and it has one of those nice green mylar caps in it um, you know the vintage Japanese ones So I think great bass, you know, um, and uh, yeah, all I've got to do is just give it a little bit of uh, fret polish, um, open up the uh, the truss access here in the, in the pit guard, give it a, a, a clean, uh, replace uh, the rear knob, um, and then we're good to go, basically. Um, I think it's, it's excellent. So uh, for those of you interested, this is probably sold. Um, 
But if it isn't, it will be listing uh, uh, at about four hundred and fifty dollars um, after all the servicing has been completed, uh, which it nearly has, as you can see in here. Um, so it's a pretty good price, I think, for a base that plays this nicely. Um, and uh, uh, however, don't despair if it is sold, uh, if it is spoken for. Again, like I said before, you can use my base hunter services um, for me to procure another option for you. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. See you again.